Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, The Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. I'm really excited for today's guest. He has an amazing story and lots of wisdom that he is going to impart, but I'd be remiss if I didn't properly introduce my co-host. You know him. You love him. The professor, the flight school Sherpa, the brain, Scott Todd from scotttodd.net landmodo.com if you're not automating your craigslist and your facebook postings postingdomination.com forward slash the land geek and if you want to continually lifelong learn check out investor ninjas.com scott todd how are you mark i'm great how are you i am fantastic i am fantastic um i finally got some better lighting in the yeah, office. I mean, like you look good, you look strong and solid. You got like this green thing behind you. Not that anybody can see this because we're on audio, but I can see it. You got this green screen behind you, so yeah, it's all good. I feel I feel like a new man. Yeah, um, yeah. I just want to let the listeners know that today's podcast is sponsored by GeekPay.io and Flight School. So if you want to start automating, collecting money, check out GeekPay.io. If you want to learn how to even make Passive income without renters, rehabs, renovations, or rodents. Learn from the best in real time. Because look, the best way to learn is do. And that's what we do over 16 weeks. I'm sorry, 14 weeks of flight school with Scott Todd leading you up that mountain of land investing. Learn more. Schedule a call with our team. See if it's right for you. Just go to thelandgeek.com forward slash training. Today's guest is Kyle Stanley. And his bio is so cool and his story is so incredible that me doing it won't even do it justice. So Kyle Stanley, welcome and please introduce yourself to the Art of Passive Income listeners. Well, hey, uh, Mark and, and Scott, I'm excited to be on the show. Uh, Mark was excited to have you on my show on Fearless Flipping. Uh, uh, Going to be airing that here in a little bit, but um, especially learning about land. I mean, that was that was awesome. That like just uh, my shiny object syndrome was just on full alert that day. <laughs> so, uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, essentially, there, Mark. Um, I'm I'm 32 years old and have had a lot of different careers. Uh, started out right out of college. I was a sports anchor in a little town called Grand Junction, Colorado, where you know I thought I was going to be the next ESPN guy. Um, I'm a huge Cubs fan. I thought it was going to be like play by play for the Cubs. Like I just, I was all about uh, the sports world and um, getting into it, just found it to be not as fulfilling as I thought. I found out early on, I didn't like taking orders from people and I wanted to help others. So uh, I wasn't able to do either of those in uh, the news. And so started my own business, moved it to Arizona where I know you reside, loved, loved, loved Arizona. But in 2016, my dad was diagnosed with bone cancer and I just felt called that I needed to be back in my hometown of Fresno, California. And um, along that lines, I, I went full time into the health and wellness industry and in a direct sales company. Really the first time right around then that I had heard about the idea of passive income and and, you know, making money while you sleep. I always thought exchanging time for dollars was really the only way. And the best part about that is that you would just, you know, you're either an employee or an employer. And uh, then when passive income came my way, I was like, man, this, this is the ticket. Um, when my dad got really sick this last September and went on to um, at-home hospice, in 2018, September then, um, I just really did a lot of self-reflecting and started listening to a lot of podcasts, put down business for a while. And it was one of those moments in my life that, um, you know, just really looked to God to, for some answers and, and figured out I, I was on the right track, but I wasn't doing what I was born to do. And so when I started hearing guys like Grant Cardone talk about how they built their wealth in real estate, I was like, hey, I got to get in this apartment game. And then I looked at how much apartments cost. I was like, hey, I can't afford this apartment game. <laughs> and so um, I just started doing a lot of research, came across a little company called Fortune Builders. Uh, the head of Fortune Builders is from Fresno, where I'm from. Saw they were going to be in town, went to a seminar, and I mean, it was just game over from there. I, I saw the opportunity in flipping and just all these exit strategies in real estate that I had no idea about. And, um, you know, I've been doing this now since January 6th of this year uh, on my third deal right now. And I've also sold my uh, primary residence to buy two Airbnbs. 
and I'm about to open up my third Airbnb here in about a week. And so um, I'm all about real estate, man, and uh, excited to be on the show. Wow. Wow. So you had just this big aha moment learning about real estate at a real estate seminar. Can you kind of give us like your, your three biggest aha moments? Three biggest. Um, well, I'll say this. I went in arms crossed, you know, knowing that there was going to be a sale and expecting it to be a big sale because it's three days. It was like 220 people there. It only cost $200 to get in the room. And I'm looking around at all the employees. I'm like, okay, they're, they're needing a big sale from a few people to really make this worth it. So cross my arms really just was there to take notes and learn. And uh, the first thing I would say is that my first aha moment was they were talking about flipping and I always had it in my mind that I had to be the one with the hammer in order to make the money. I thought that that's where the profit was made by actually doing the work and taking out the labor and paying someone else for the labor. Um, when this guy stood up there, his name is Ryan Carmody. He's actually been on my show. He's made just recently a $276,000 on a flip without touching a hammer and shared that. And I was like, okay, uh, first aha moment. Um, second aha moment I would say was wholesaling, had no idea what wholesaling was and to learn about this idea that you could take a contract and just assign that contract and never put down any money or have to, um, even own the house in order to make, um, upwards of, you know, some have made six figures on a wholesale. That was a big one. And then the third one is I, I had to, on the third day, I'm, I'm really good at saying yes. I'm not very good at saying no to a lot of things. So I tend to overload my plate. So I actually brought uh, the person who knows me the best into the room, my mom, and said, mom, tell me that I'm crazy. Tell me that I shouldn't do this. And after a couple hours there, she said, uh, you'd be crazy if you didn't do this. And so that was all I needed to, to jump in. I put down a lot of money and uh, started getting to work. Uh, skin in the game was definitely a motivator. Nice. Scott Todd. Can you send me a check for $1,000? Based on your inability to say no, like <laughs> just say yes, come on. No, no just kidding. <laughs> Look, I mean, I, I think it's a pretty cool story. Like, you know, I think what what's standing out at me, Mark, like glaring out at me is just the action, right? Like he had this aha moment and like nothing was going to stop him, right? Like, you know, it's, and I think that that's a, a big key to change and to, to getting things done is you know, if, if you just wake up one day and you go like, oh, well, I think I want to do this. This is kind of cool to go do. Probably not going to pan out. But if you go in there and you're like, you have some event and it could be real or fake, but like some burning desire to make some change in your life, man, you're going to be unstoppable. And I think that's what we see here with Kyle is that, you know, he had this event and then all of a sudden, like this is happening, this is happening, this is happening. The stuff is starting to happen and he's doing like what he's done in, in eight months is pretty dang, pretty dang uh, incredible, I think. Yeah, absolutely. And, and Kyle, I, I'd love to know, you know, and dig a little bit deeper into just this, these, these insights of your big why. I mean, you, you kind of just gave us high level, like this realization of getting out of what I call solo economic dependency, which means if you're personally not working, you're not making any money and realizing that true freedom comes from passive income, making money in your sleep so that you can have the freedom to work when you want, with whom you want, where you want. Looking at you right now, it looks like you've got that. You have your own podcast. It appears to me that you don't have a day job and mm -hmm. you're kind of doing that now. So my question really is, what was sort of the impetus for you that gave you that insight? And then what really pushed you through the fear of taking what Scott Todd is referring to as essentially massive action? Sure, sure. Well, I, I like how you dropped the word fear in there uh, <laughs> with the fearless flipping here. So um you know, I, I don't know if this answers your question here, Mark, and tell me if it doesn't. But, you know, my, my big thing was um, one part I left out of that story is I jumped in with Fortune Builders on January 6th. January 7th, I was starting a brand new full-time job, brand new. Um, so, like, that's how 
for sure I was about this real estate thing. And um, then just recently, about uh, two weeks ago, I, I quit that full-time job. Um, and really the reason being is I did- so Everybody knows we're, we're recording this in August. So that's yeah. eight months. Exactly. Yeah. So um, really, I, I was pushed to just get out of my comfort zone and to leave the full-time job, even though you know, I, I would say that I'm at a point in my real estate game that I'm definitely like most people wouldn't have left their full-time job, but I had an interview with one of my guests. His name is Matt Garabedian. And he does like 150 wholesale uh, jobs or uh, deals every single year. And, and he was like, man, I just burned the boats. Like I just, there was no plan B. And he was just saying, if, if there's a plan B, you just, you always go back to that safety net. And I was like, man, I'm, I'm totally doing that. Like I need to get out of this safety net. So um, yeah, like I said, I don't know if that really answers your question, but that, that kind of was the first thing that came to mind because I just needed to get out of my safety net. And, um, because of that, yeah, just taking max massive action. Cause I know there is no plan B. Yeah. I mean, do you think that your, your father's recent passing was something that really helped you galvanize and, and face the fear that, Hey, you know, we're here for like a blink of an eye. Mm -hmm. And so while we're here, we might as well live our best life. And clearly whatever I'm doing right now, isn't that. Yeah. I mean, hundred percent. Um, my dad was an entrepreneur. Um, he was, if you've ever read the e-myth, he was more of the technician and manager for most of his life. So that's probably why I never understood the passive income, uh, side of things until, you know, I got into my, uh, mid twenties, but, um, yeah, I mean, my, my dad struggled for a, a long time and, um, he was also one of those guys that he tried a lot of different careers uh, in his life too. And he was 44 when he started his own business. And I don't know if you've ever heard of the, the business Jostens, but um, he's a competitor of Jostens out here in Fresno, kick Jostens out of 60 different schools here. So uh, <laughs> it's kind of his claim to fame, but um, you know, he was, he also um, was one of those guys that, you know, he fought for his family and he was always protecting us and he was stubborn as hell. So <laughs> that was also a part of just how good of a fighter he was. I mean, the guy should have been dead 20 different times um, and, and, you know, lived to be 85. I have an older dad. Um, and so anyway, um, I just, I found myself, yeah, for sure. I mean, just reflecting and, and seeing, you know, the life that he lived and he really did touch a lot of lives. And that was always something that I just wanted to do. I wanted to touch a lot of lives and I never, I guess that would be another aha moment that I had at that real estate seminars. I didn't realize how many people you actually help in this process of buying and selling or renting out a home, all the people that you put to work, all the, you know, tenants that you help out, all the sellers that, you know, are struggling. And I just saw an opportunity to help, a lot of people just like my dad had. And, and yeah, I mean, I, I think especially the, the protective mindset, like I, I'm living with my mom right now just because, you know, the transitions first time she's ever been alone for 40 years and um, she's been doing really good, but you know, that protective um, and, you know, wanting to help others and um, be that guy for you, the people who are closest to you definitely took over. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's such a cliche, but really that having that purpose above and beyond yourself and, and helping others is so much more gratifying and meaningful mm, absolutely and just making a bunch of money for yourself so you can buy toys and go on vacations and you know kind of feed the ego uh exactly. scott todd you know i don't really talk enough about your sort of accomplishments in your story like it's it's always nice to go back to it and just so kyle knows i just do a quick synopsis Scott was working at a Fortune 300 company, saw the writing on the wall, um, vice president, and using our land investing model, was able to replace his income in 17 months in three days so mm. that when the time occurred, he protected his family and he could, he could quit. And then from there, he has now built a passive income where his net worth is, um, I mean... In, into the, the nine figures. So we, we don't talk about it enough, but if we rewind the, and we sort of extract, Scott, your 
your success secrets, I want to just kind of go back because we're talking about dads. Like what was, what do you think you learned the most valuable lesson from your dad that you can look back now and say, well, because of this, I can see why I'm so successful today. You know, I think that what my dad taught me, like, uh, so, so my dad was a Marine, right? You know, like he, he, he was a Marine. And then what happened was he, he used his skills that he learned in the Marines to build this like rock solid work ethic. Okay. So like my dad basically, you know, like when, when he, when I was born, he was working for the telephone company. I think he's actually working for an auto parts company, but then he got a job at the telephone company, like right around the same time I was born. And then he worked his way up. He started at the line, you know, lineman is climbing the poles. You know, he, he continued always educating himself, always trying to get better. And the one thing that, I mean, you, you learn a lot from your parents, but the one thing that he did definitely teach me was like, listen, if you're going to, if you're going to do something, do it to the best of your ability. Like you, you don't have to like, you don't always have to win, but like, man, show up. Okay. Like if you're going to go in, go in and be the best, be the best that you can be. And if you can't be the best, it's okay. Like if you're not the best in general, it's okay. As long as you show up and deliver your game, the best that you can be and do, that's it. Like do, do that stuff. And so then I think where that carries you is it, it builds in this work ethic that just says like, I'm always going to be learning. That's what my dad did. Like he, he always was learning. He was always trying to get better. He was always trying to teach himself new things or going to classes and getting certified for things. That, that's what he, he was doing. So he was teaching himself. He's a self, you know, like a self-motivated guy. And so essentially, you know, I, I pick up that skill set. I think that that's what kind of gets me into the, into the corporate world is, okay, well, I'm going to go and I'm going to be the best I can be in this position, right? And then I had a boss once that told me, and it kind of builds on top of this, but I had a boss once who told me like, you know, if you want, if you want to get promoted in corporate America, well, all you got to do is be 1% better than anybody else doing that job. Just 1% better. He's like, if you just worked 1% more than anybody else and did it in a very strategic way that bam, you delivered value, you're going to get noticed. And so now you build that on top of the work ethic thing that I, I taught from, or I was learned from, or learned from my dad. Boom. Now all of a sudden I'm like, I always just want to be 1% better. Just one. So if somebody's going to do something like, and they're going to deliver a thousand dollars worth of value, I'm going to deliver a thousand and one dollars worth of value. Okay. And so then all of a sudden it starts to build and it allows you to grow within, a, within the company. I think that that work ethic kind of got me even to where I am today, because if I'm going to go do the land business, I'm going to learn it. I'm going to embrace it. I'm going to kind of immerse myself in it. And then I'm going to go boom and I'm going to do the best I can do at it. Yeah. Whether I'm number one or not, it doesn't matter as long as I'm bringing my best game every time. You know, Scott, I, it's funny that you just said that because the number one thing that my dad always instilled in me was if there's any job worth doing, it's worth doing right. And I remember very specifically, like a few times he would have me do yard work. We had this like beautiful backyard and he would always do the yard work himself, but then he would have me clean up the leaves. And if there's like even one layer of leaves out there on the gravel, he's like, is that the best you can do? And I would put my head down and go back out there and no, that's not the best I can do. <laughs> so I, I know what you're talking about there. That's awesome. Right. There's a fam famous story from Henry Kissinger where his speechwriter would turn in the speech and Henry Kissinger would look at him and say, is this the best you can do? And the speechwriter would then be like, Oh, okay. And then just bring it back. And he would rewrite it again. He'd give it to Henry Kissinger again. And he'd look at him. He's like, is the, is this the best you can do? And speechwriter like, Hmm. All right. He would <laughs> then rewrite it again, give it to him again. And again, he would say, is this really the best you can do? And the whole time the speechwriters realizing he's not even reading it. He's assuming <laughs> that he's, he doesn't like it. He's just really asking him to, to reflect is this really the best you can do. And then he's like, yeah, this really is my very best, but it did take two or three times to really be, honest with himself and say, okay, now this is really the best I can do. Steve Jobs was famous for doing that with developers as well. 
with their code. Um, I can say as far as like my dad was concerned, I, I feel like Kyle, like you and I have a lot in common. My dad was entrepreneurial and, but also in the, the technician side of it. Mm -hmm. So I saw a guy with a tremendous work ethic up early, you know, home late, come home, do more work. And, you know, but also made time for his kids. Like he never, he's coached all my sporting events, you know, never missed an event on, on the weekends, but super focused during the week on, on working super hard. And, um, for me, it was, um, instilled a work ethic, but also instilled this cautionary tale that I don't want to be the person that's tied to the business. I want to be, I want to be totally free to work when I want, where I want, with whom I want and have this passive income. My dad really never built that. Um, so Kyle, let's talk about fear because the name of your podcast is fearless flipping. I can imagine that you've gone through just the full range of fears. Can you kind of walk us through your three biggest fears starting the land flipping business all the way up to um, quitting your job? Uh, so you're talking about just in starting in real estate? Got it. Um, yeah, the, the first one was was really the, um, like, uh, excuse my French, but, but oh shit, I'm doing this, <laughs> you know, like, holy cow. Like I just dropped a lot of money. What if this doesn't work? Um, and that was my first fear. My second fear was then when I got my first deal under contract and it's just like, what's next? What do I do? And then, um, man, third, probably I mean it might be just you know going all in and saying okay I'm gonna burn the bridges burn the boats and and just quit the job uh, but what I can say is that the reason I've been able to overcome that fear I have I I have a desire to be the the best I have a desire to you know work harder than anyone but that's not why I've been able to get over the fear, it helps. But the biggest reason is I have not been afraid to seek counsel. Um, like I believe that if you want to get where you want to go, it's dumb to think that you can figure that out on your own. You've got to ask people that have been there, that have done that. The reason that they are going to help you um, is, or the reason that you want their help is because you want to make sure that you avoid the mistakes that they made. Or if you hear about these things that they've done and it's been successful, you want to, you want to mimic that. You want to do it the same way. And people keep saying, you know, Hey, don't reinvent the wheel. I, the wheel has been getting reinvented ever since it was made. So like, there's always going to be ways that you can make systems better. Like one thing that I really brought to one of my mentors here and a few different mentors actually is this concept of Airbnb. People are like Airbnb in Fresno. I started it in Scottsdale when I lived there. And like, duh, of course people want to go to Scottsdale. But when I moved back to Fresno, I was like, well, there goes Airbnb. And just for, you know, uh, some laughs, I was like, oh, let's throw it on Airbnb, see what happens. And guys, like I get booked probably about 20 to 25 nights per month here in Fresno, California of all places. And to show my mentor and to bring that value to them, that's what I believe has also like kind of helped those relationships build. So I have more mentors around me is that I've added value to other people by starting this podcast. It's made me different. It's added value to those people too. They've gotten some more traction in their business. So, um, just try, I guess the roundabout there is having counsel, but also like bringing back value to them too, so that it's not just a take, take, take type of relationship. I love it. Scott, Todd, what are your thoughts? Well, I think that that's uh, like, I personally think that, and Kyle's mentioned this a couple of times, but I think that that's one thing that I think people um, forget or take for granted sometimes is that no real value exchanges in, in the world unless unless people get benefit from it, right? So, you know, essentially like what he was just saying, like he's helped other people, right? Like he's helping other people, he's helping his mentor, he's helping these other people by adding value, he's adding value to their lives as well. And you can do that in, in different ways. And it's the same thing with buying properties too. When you're buying properties, we think of it like, oh, well, man, I'm taking this from somebody. Well, you're not taking anything from anybody. That, that would be called robbery, right? Like you can't, you can't take someone's property from them. 
However, you can sure as heck solve a problem that they have. And if you solve the problem, if you solve, if you get good enough at solving problems, well, then the money's going to flow to you. you. You know, ultimately where the money comes is from being a professional problem solver uh, and helping people. Now you can do that through, even through the Airbnb platform, you know, like you can provide a, 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 a rental basically that allows other people to benefit from the asset that you own. So again, you're helping people, you're helping people to create a lifestyle, you're helping people to create a memory, you're helping value creation comes from helping people. And there's many different ways that you can do it. And so it doesn't, you know, don't ever think that you're stealing some, from somebody or you're taking from somebody. I mean, there are people out there that do that. We know, we know some people, but at the same time, most people try to add value to their relationships. And I think that that's one of the things that I, I take away from what Kyle was saying here too. Yeah. I, I can imagine though that that first big check that you had to write for your education and mentorship. Um, how did you get over that? Because if you go online let's just pick on bigger pockets. You know, they would say, Hey, look, all the information you need is free. There's really no reason to invest 40, 50, 60, 70, a hundred thousand dollars on mentorship. Everything you need is here for nine bucks a month. So how did you sort of get over that sort of fear of, wait, am I overpaying for education? Am I, am I being irresponsible here? Can I just, you know, read a few blog posts and, and start doing this? Yeah, yeah. How did you, how did you get over that? Yeah. I hear Brandon talk about that a lot on bigger pockets. Like, you know, that a lot of these companies are taking money and I'll, I'll say this, uh, the one that I chose with fortune builders is delivered on every single promise that they made and even gone above and beyond. So I, I don't regret it at all, but it's funny, Mark, because you know, this mentor that I have locally, I called him, I, I got introduced to him through a contractor that I ended up using and I called him like one or two weeks after I signed up for fortune builders and he straight up said, um, can you get a refund? I said, why do you ask? He's like, cause I'll teach you this for free. And you know, my initial gut reaction was like, what did I just do? I just spent like all this money that I could have been using for marketing. But then when I took a second, I was like, no, like the reason I've been in action so much is because I have this like loss that I need to, I need to go fill that back in. I need to get all that money back. And I truly believe that's why I had my first deal under contract just five weeks after joining fortune builders, because I was putting in three to five offers a week on the MLS and building relationships and, you know, continuing to just like, I got to find that first deal. And so for me, yeah, it was initial fear, uh, but I didn't let the fear paralyze me. I let the fear drive me. Um, you know, they say that fear will push you until vision pulls you. Um, I'm still at that point where like some of the fear is like, it's pushing me. Uh, but I'm getting to that point too, where it's like, all right, I'm starting to see that vision. Like I just interviewed a guy recently who uh, he's, he's now like part of my, uh, with the life that he lives is like now part of my why he has a luxury mobile home where he just picks up and takes his wife and six month old daughter wherever they want to go for two months at a time, like literally on a couple days notice. And I'm like, man, that's the life. Like that's the vision that I can see is just like having that freedom to just go do whatever I want, whenever I want. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah. And I love the fact that you, you can see right away the value of having skin in the game. Mm -hmm. uh, I can't tell you how many emails I get a week asking me for free mentorship or in exchange, I'll do this or that. I'm like, you know, if we were going to partner in a business, would you want to partner with me if I was to put no money in? No way. And they're like, no, of course not. Yeah. You're, you're not going to work as hard. And it's, it's true. And I, I think that oftentimes we lose per, you know, like, like sight of the true investment of it. So for example, my son's going off to college next week and we're investing all this money in university, the professors have really literally no real world experience. He's going to get intellectual knowledge. He's, I mean, this investment is like the worst investment of all time. That being said, it's a good foundation and you know, it's a credentialed society and it's going to help them. And there's a lot of social reasons to do it, but from a purely education standpoint, I'm fully aware he's truly going to come out of this with nothing. 
that's yeah. that's really going to help him build real wealth. Versus well, like, if I went to Scott Todd and I yeah. said here, like I would inv- like at this point in time, like if Scott Todd said, hey, I'm going to teach you everything I'm going to teach you, like I know to build a, a nine figure net worth. Like I'd be like, okay, here's a million dollars. No yeah. problem. I'll go into debt. I'll do whatever it takes. Just tell me exactly what to do. I'll do like, I- I'll be like, be my Mr. Miyagi. You say wax on, I'll wax on. You say wax off, I'll wax off. No questions asked. And just as blind faith, like, look, if he can do it, I can do it. Yeah. I just have to do it. And that, that's the, the life and the, the society that we're going into is a self-education even more so away from college. I, was, I just interviewed Tim Bratz the other day, and Tim said, you know, like I, at the age of 23, he was trying to get his first deal by reading about it in books. He's like, can you learn to swim by reading about it in books? No, you can't. You have to get out there and do it. And like even I've, I've found that with everything that I've done in life, uh, no matter what it is, the, probably the biggest example is when I was in college, and I wanted to be that sports anchor, play-by-play guy for the Cubs. Like, I knew that I wasn't going to learn about how to work a camera by reading about it in a book. I had to go out there. I had to get an internship. I worked for the Padres. I did all this stuff that, like, really got me ingrained with professionals to learn from them. And it's funny, not to knock on my college, but, you know, they email me every once in a while saying, like, hey, can you do this survey saying how we helped you get into your – uh, your career. And I'm like, yeah, you just introduced me to the right internships. <laughs> so, uh, it's, it's just, I don't know. I just think you, there's no better way to learn than to do make mistakes. And once again, you know, when you make those mistakes, don't let the fear paralyze you, let it drive you until that vision pulls you. I love it. I love it. Well, Kyle, we're at that point now in the podcast where we're going to ask you for your tip of the week, a website, a resource, a book, something actual for the art of passive income listeners to go improve their businesses, improve their lives. What do you got? Yeah. Uh, if you just go to fearlessflipping.com, uh, right there on the homepage, you can download my free ultimate guide to becoming a real estate investor. Um, I'd also like to throw out there uh, for your your uh, land geek listeners, um, if you go ahead and email me, so just go to fearlessflipping.com, go to that contact page. And for the subject, you know, just put land geek or, hey, I listened to you on, uh, you know, Mark and uh, Scott's podcast, whatever it is, I would be happy to jump on the phone for a free 15 minute consultation just to share my knowledge, share what I've done here in the beginning of my business. But I guess for the biggest like tip here, uh, just stay in your lane. Um, That was the biggest advice that I got when I first started from a friend of mine named Valentin Pitts. Um, he's been doing real estate for five years, never lost a, a single dollar on any real estate deal. And he says, he, it's just all about staying in his lane and which is flipping and buying holds. And so, you know, you find those one or two exit strategies. If it's land for you like that, that's gotta be your one or two, because if you start trying to get into those other lanes and stay in there for a little bit, then you're just going to find that main lane that you're in. You're not going to get anywhere. So, I would just say stay in that main lane. And when you see that opportunity to put on your blinker and go over there, but you just come right back into that main lane um, that you were driving in, because that's, that's what's going to help keep you focused and drive you towards those deals that you want to get. I love it. I love it. Scott Todd, what's your tip of the week? Mark, you know, I've um, been, I've been flying for a couple of years now and it's a lot of fun. And my tip is not to go fly. My tip is really something that's very practical go like whatever you do it's so easy to get obsessed with um if you're like me to get obsessed with things like land investing or flipping or whatever you want to do and the problem with doing that when you start to consume like let that consume you is you start to read everything you start to like spend a lot of time on facebook and all these chat groups and whatever which is all cool it's how you learn however Go grab your hobby, whatever it is. Don't lose sight of a hobby, something to keep you like outside of business. And then like read things in your hobby, like become that like that proficient student at your hobby. And what you will find a lot of times is that the knowledge that you have from your hobby translates over into your business or all of a sudden you're like, oh, well, I can see how this applies to here, whether it's golf, boating, flying, whatever it is, I guarantee you that if you take something from one of the hobbies or interests that you have and apply it back to your business, it will transform it. But sometimes you got to get out of that business mindset 
Stop reading all the business books. Start reading your hobby books. And then all of a sudden, you'll get great ideas that feed back over to the business side. So it's a more of a practical tip to make sure that you're doing as opposed to here, go take action on this one thing. Fantastic. Fantastic. Well, my tip of the week is a quote that I've really been thinking about. And I think for a lot of people, it, it could sort of be this, this like Kyle Stanley aha moment. And it's that you can't penny pinch your way to wealth. And when you really think about it, all these great companies, like let's just say Jeff Bezos, right? For years and years and years, this guy poured every single dollar back into the business. Kyle's a great example. He faced the fear of, okay, I've got this choice here. Am I going to invest in myself and to become truly wealthy, which means true freedom and not have to be at a job at a certain time and wear a suit or whatever it is, avoid the commute? Or am I just going to, you know, try to figure this stuff out on my own and end up maybe losing more money than he would have in, in the process just because of time and mistakes. And so I think that it's an interesting concept that you really have to embrace that you can't penny pinch your way to wealth. You need to invest in yourself. You need to invest in tools. You need to keep reinvesting in education and all these things that can compound and get you to where you truly want to be. That being said, if you want to penny pinch your way to sustenance, you absolutely can. We could all live on beans and rice. We could all get a tiny home and nothing wrong with that. Save 75, 80% of your income. But I truly don't think that even that that's still not going to get you to wealth. You're still not going to be able to work when you want, where you want, with whom you want, at least not at a productive age. Maybe you would be in your eighties and be like, okay, I deprived myself for all these years and now I can golf with a bad back. So, um, that's sort of my tip of the week. And then also just check out Kyle, go to fearlessflipping.com. He gave a very generous offer there. Take advantage of it. And, um, you know, Kyle, thanks so much for uh, spending time with us. Hey, Mark, Scott, you guys have been awesome. Love, uh, love your stuff. Really, uh, really excited to be on the show. Thank you so much. Thank you. Scott Todd, are we good? We're good, Mark. Dear listener, thank you so much. I hope you're getting value from the podcast. If you are, best favor you can give us is three little things. Take two seconds, subscribe, rate, and review the podcast. Send us a screenshot of that review to support at thelandgeek.com. We're going to send you for free the $97 passive income launch kit. Please do that. Share it on the interwebs. We really appreciate it. All right, Scott, you ready? One, two, three, let, Let freedom, freedom ring. ring. Kyle's like, oh gosh. <laughs> These guys That's have done awesome. this 300 times and it's still this awkward. You guys are awesome. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go right right now. All right. Thanks, Kyle. <laughs> All right. Thanks, everybody.